Hoi everyone, so this is Ellie and this video is basically me sharing with you my review of Clip Studio Paint on the iPad Pro. No YouTuber intro and all that, I like to get straight to the point. So this video is actually my first sponsored video and it is by none other than the very kind people at Clip Studio Paint. You know that I've never done a voiceover before so I'm a little awkward about it. But I hope this gives you enough information on why I have been loving this program so much. You know, even before CSP had reached out to me, I had actually downloaded the app because all the artists that I follow on Twitter were raving. They were always raving about the program, posting previews using the program about how affordable and how multifunctional it was for like animation, painting, comic stripping and even more. But when I first opened it, I actually got scared because it looked so complex and it looked so technical looking. Basically, whatever you see is completely, and I mean completely customizable. And this is great for both left and right handers. And this means that you can shift around the panels to suit your own personal painting process. For me, I like to have my brush setting options on the left and the color wheel layers and navigation panels on my right. I know it seems very specific but um, this is actually because this used to be my workspace layout back when I used to use uh, Paint Tool Sci back when I had Windows. And so this flexibility was actually what allowed me to finally really warm up quickly to CSP. So my second favourite asset is actually the 3D models but I realized that when I was drawing, I forgot to show you guys how I use the 3D models for anatomy planning. And that's because this pose isn't very complex to me, but it's okay. I'm going to demonstrate it still. You can download the model from their free assets by clicking on their logo at the top left hand corner. Click on open Clip Studio. Go to Clip Studio Assets and this is going to launch the page where you can download 3D models, backgrounds, brushes, textures, and more. This really saved me so much hassle from having to conduct research for the best brush packs and saving money to buy them. When CSP has such a wide and giving community, there's a whole section of free materials. And my student, my broke ass student wallet was so happy. You'll be glad to know that importing these brushes and 3D models are just as easy. You just have to go to your downloads folder and all you have to do is just drag them into the canvas. I'm just going to be frank here and say that I'm not the best at 3D modeling and I just do not have enough brain cells to be able to maneuver every joint perfectly and work the axis. But I really know that this is going to be a lifesaver and game changer, especially for mm, comic artists because they also have 3D models, not just for human anatomy, but for complex backgrounds such as classrooms. It's going to save people a lot of time. You don't have to be accurate anyways because this is just to give you a rough like, gauge of the angles, the perspective and the poses, if it looks natural or not. Okay, so now that the sketch is done, let's talk about vector layers while moving on to line art. Uh, sorry that my camera blurred a little here, but you can open one by going to layer, new layer and vector layer. This might be of special interest to those of you who draw comics, animate, design logos, banners and icons. You can basically work with your favourite brush which will be turned into vector lines and you can basically manipulate and scale it without compromising its quality. So for product designers who have to have their works posted onto like the biggest banners and like the smallest pouches, this would be really handy for you. The next tool when it comes to colouring that I just have to show you is the AI colorizing tool. It's basically you dropping a few splotches of paint here and there and the AI bot can actually color it in within the lines for you. I have, I have no idea how they do that. I really have no idea but it is so cool. You just have to watch and see how it works yourself. 
Okay, so to use this, you basically have to go to your line art layer, turn into a reference layer by clicking this button, and then select the layer that contains the colors. Go to edit, go to colorize, use hint image and colorize, hit the button, and let the magic happen. Look at that! Like, look at that! It looks exactly like um the glass, glass art at churches, glass stain. Stained glass, stained glass in at churches. Oh my god, don't cancel me. Like, oh my god, how do they even? I don't know about you, but this just saved my ass a ton of time. I think the part where they did the hair is like the coolest. I don't know how, but they managed to calculate this sort of depth just by taking in the data of how the lines are like constructed around each other. Like the back part of the head is lighter than the front part and it blends really nicely to the skin. Basically what I do here is just add on with some rendering and more saturation for more depth and creating sharper shadows. If you've been following me for a long time, you would know that my old painting style was quite diluted with a lot of like watercolory, blendy colours and that was like the happiest time that uh, it was for me with digital art. Although there are many people who say that it's not the brush who makes the artist. I personally still feel like it defines a big part of like your art style and it sparks joy in the process which is very important because we all know that art is really hard and when you're just not vibing with the brush that you have, the journey is just gonna be tougher. So I've shared with you like so many things that I love about this program but I think the one that I really love the most is probably like CSP's brush settings. I know it's like it seems so boring but this is really what made this painting process such a joy for me each time. It's because I like to have this accessibility to constantly like tweak the dilution, the colour stretching of my brushes along the way, the opacity, the hardness, like I need to have constant access to all these settings, you know? And this is because like I've come to realise that in order to work quickly and pull off like various effects of texture and lighting, you know, how do you make an arm look hard? How do you make an arm look smooth and soft? You shouldn't think that just having one good brush is going to see you through to the end. So let me just show you what I mean. Um, so I'm working on his arm and I like to start off with having like one dark shadow first and with a high amount of paint and paint density with no colour stretching. Afterwards, I'm going to add some saturation to the shadows and to soften the edges out by slowly increasing the colour stretching and lowering the amount of paint. The pen sensitivity is also, oh my god, I love it. And I'm able to like slowly mold his arm up to look more rounded and soft by slowly like blending it out gently. So this is one arm done and the other arm is a different story. So you know it's like pressed against like the elbow and it in doing this it reveals like some hardened muscles and edges. Oh yeah. And same as usual, I'm going to press down with the pen because you know the pen sensitivity. I'm going to press down hard to create a dark shadow with sharp edges. And then I would slowly blend out the areas that I want to look softer with a lighter paint and keeping the edge of the muscle sharp so that you know, so the bicep can still look juicy. And ding! You have it. But yeah, if you've been watching this video, this is basically why you can see my hands like constantly flying to the left of the screen to recalibrate um, my brush settings and the colour stretching especially. Uh, it may seem very tiresome but with just a few hours of practice, it can really become second nature to you honestly. And at the end of the rendering, I like to just turn the rendering layer on and off to kind of get a sense of achievement. But basically, you know, you've seen how I've turned this flat white torso into like a whole chest with dimensions. And 
it may look tiring, but it is like it feels like breathing in no time. Because of like the colorizing tool that the AI like Mr. Mr. CSP AI robot has helped us with laying the groundwork for the color palettes and the blending. It makes this whole process a lot faster and simpler with color picking. So yeah, I think I'm basically done now. Basically, I shared with you about my favourite tools with their flexible workspace, their 3D models, free assets, vector lines, their AI colorizing tool, and their accessible brush settings. But I feel like one thing that is often overlooked is such an awesome part about CSP is the strong sense of community that they've managed to cultivate that really inspired me to make use of like many tools that I've not even considered like AI Huh? 3D models? So yeah, if you are looking for a program that's going to push you beyond your limits and encourage you to take new risks, this is the one for you. Thank you so much again to Clip Studio Paint for sponsoring this video. And I really hope that it's encouraged you to pick up your pen and keep drawing.